In this episode of Velocity Labs, we're upgrading our tuning software to speed density. Why? For speed. All right, so this video is gonna be a quick walkthrough on our first steps in our preparation for installing our Twin Scroll HX35 Turbo. Also, starting now, I'm gonna be releasing new videos every two weeks on Wednesday for the rest of 2017. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're gonna be doing lots of stuff on the DSM and we're gonna get into the VW Bug Subaru swap as well. All right, onto the turbo. All right, so here's our HX35 that we're gonna be installing. It's absolutely enormous sitting next to the stock TD05 Turbo. And the crazy thing is, because we'll be doing a twin scroll setup, it should spool just as fast, if not faster than this little 14B, which is just crazy. One of the reasons for that is because in a twin scroll setup, the exhaust is divided in two. Each side only has two exhaust runners meeting at the collector. They never merge. What does that equal? Spool magic. But there's a little bit that we need to do before we simply bolt on this twin scroll exhaust manifold and HX35 turbo. In fact, this really isn't a bolt-on process at all. We're gonna need to fabricate a custom downpipe, get two wastegates. Remember, it's twin scroll and the exhaust runners never meet, so we actually need two wastegates. Uh, we need to fabricate dump pipes uh, for both those wastegates, change the oil return setup, and a bunch more. But the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna switch our tuning over from a mass airflow sensor-based tune to a speed density tune. All right, so there's a bunch of good reasons to upgrade your car to speed density. For one, you get to get rid of the mass airflow sensor, which is a restriction on the intake. That's good. Plus the mass airflow sensor has limitations when it comes to high boost and high RPM setups. You also don't have to recirculate your blow-off valve, which means cleaning up the engine bay a little. That's good too. Plus, a lot of people think it's actually easier to tune than a mass airflow sensor. That's also good. All right, so for me though, technically I don't need any of those things to install an HX35, but I'm gonna need a new intake anyway, so we might as well clean things up and simplify things a little. Why do I need a new intake? Because the stock 1G snorkel certainly isn't gonna fit over the four inch turbo inlet on the HX35. Anyway, here's the speed density setup from ECM Link. I also need to upgrade my tuning software from ECM Link V3 Lite to V3 Full. I don't absolutely need this upgrade to run a speed density setup, but the full version is well worth it. You can find the full product comparison on ECM Link's website. It's full of awesome info. Just look at all those extra check marks I get. To purchase the upgrade, just head to ECM Link's website. This will actually be pretty rare now as they don't even sell the light version anymore. Anyway, once that's purchased, we need to launch ECM Link and create a firmware request. And actually, we need to be connected to the ECU to do this, so hop in the car first and then plug it in. There we go. Next, we email that file to ECM Tuning and they email back a new firmware image. Next, we make sure that we're on the latest version of the software and then we download the new image file and then plug the laptop back into the ECU. Fire up the software and then use the upgrade firmware option. This upgrade will take a little while because it overwrites the ECU and uh, you'll see your check engine light flashing on your dash as it does it. There we go, done, piece of cake. All right, now that the software is done, it's time for the hardware install. Oh, and let's just toss these out. I loathe wiring stuff, so I opted for the pre-wired cable that plugs right into the mass airflow sensor. First up is the GM IAT sensor. We need to mount this close to our throttle body, so we need to figure out where we wanna put it first. I did a bit of research online, and a few inches behind the throttle body on the back side seems to be the go-to spot. Next thing we need to do is weld the aluminum bung that ECM Link includes on the upgrade package onto the throttle body elbow so we can screw in our GM IAT sensor. First we remove the throttle body elbow, then we weld the... Oh wait, I don't have the ability to weld aluminum. Or steel. Or anything. I can't weld. Alright, you know what that means. Time to make a quick stop at Willy's. I marked the spot where I wanted the bung, so Willy drilled it out and welded it up. Beautiful. Listen, if any of you know a welder that's willing to help you out on your projects, be sure to occasionally send them niceties like a gift basket or hookers and coke. You know, just something to let them know that they're appreciated. Then all we have to do is screw in the sensor and then pop the throttle body elbow back on the car.
Anyway, next up is the GM map sensor. This needs a vacuum boost source as close to the intake manifold as possible. Ideally, you'll want to tap its own dedicated port, but any good boost source close to the manifold will do. I'm gonna be using this line that runs to my fuel pressure regulator. It also splits off to my boost gauge. So we'll tee in right there next to the manifold. There's even an open bolt for a place to secure it. This edge of the mounting bracket is a little thick though, and the bolt that I have isn't quite long enough. So we're gonna trim it down a little bit with the grinder. I was really careful here not to let it get too hot or damage the sensor. Slow and steady is best here. There we go, perfect. I'm also gonna add a rubber washer to help dampen any vibrations on the sensor. Next, we pick out some hose and a T-fitting and start plumbing everything up. Connect some vacuum line to the GM map sensor, a short piece to the manifold, then simply splice in a T-connector. And this particular piece of line is pretty old, so let's go ahead and replace that as well. It was really jammed on there and it was a bit of a pain to get off. Oh, and this uh, shield covering thing was on there as well. And I don't know what it's meant to protect from specifically, but we might as well reuse it. There we go, tucked in there nice and snug. Now all we have to do is plug in the cable. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the quality of this piece, especially if you're as bad at wiring as I am. This looks just pristine, definitely worth it. Then just plug in the connectors. The big one goes to the mass airflow sensor connector, one goes to the GM MAP sensor, and then the last one goes into the GM IAT sensor. Easy as pie. Actually, let's reroute the MAP sensor one. There, that's better. Now all we need to do is set up the tube for speed density. Jaffro has an excellent setup video and I'll link that in the description. And I'm not fluent enough to teach you guys how to do it and uh, I had some friends help me with my tune so all you need to do now is just see if it starts. Quit laughing, it's on E85, it's cold out and it's been sitting for weeks. There we go, jackpot. All right, so that's a pretty easy upgrade and we should see some significant gains from it as well. Hit subscribe in the next episode, we're gonna be taking this gorgeous twin scroll manifold and heat wrapping it.